Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcraft and today we're going to be doing a fragrance oil review on three separate wooden wick fragrance oils. Uh, now these are some I've been using for a little while so I've got a little bit, little bit more experience with a lot of testing going into these. I've burned them uh, in a couple different waxes so I kind of wanted to go over these and kind of give my thoughts on these uh, since we have a lot of people asking about wooden wick fragrance oils. Uh, the three that we're going to be talking about today is Cloudberry Balsam, Maple Chai Sweet Cream, and Flowering Cove and Sandalwood. Now all three of these are actually very very different uh, and I kind of wanted to go over them and there are three fragrance oils from the Wooden Wick Co that I actually like quite a bit. I have a lot of their oils in my office and I'm going to do a few more on these but uh, I wanted to pull these aside because I've worked with these the most so far. Uh, so the first one that I've got right here is the Cloudberry and Balsam. Uh, this is one that I've burned several times, made a couple different waxes. I used it in uh, the Coconut Soy, the Cocoa Apricot and of course 6006. Uh, this one it starts out uh, it basically, I'll just go through and read the uh, the description for these and then talk about the notes that are in them. Uh, fresh is the first snowfall, alpine air, water mint, fresh currant, pink juniper berry, and balsam mingle to rejuvenate the winter holiday spirit. Uh, so this one, they have a mood on their uh, oil. So this one is fresh and spirited. Uh, the top notes are alpine air, water mint, fresh currant. Uh, the middle notes are pink juniper berry, balsam, and bergamot. Uh, and the base is clove, patchouli, and cedar. Uh, and then, of course, it goes into a few more descriptions. Contains en essential oils of uh, uh, contains essential oils from uh, of Litzy, uh, from China, wild mint from India, rosemary leaf from Tunisia, red cedar from USA, uh, clove bud. Let me see, white cedar, lemon peel. So it's got a bunch of different things in there. And there's a bunch more in here that kind of round out and basically make up the entire scent. Uh, clear sage, Roman chamomile, uh, and fir needle. So if you're using this one, the first thing that jumps out to me is, is definitely the berry. It's probably going to be the pink juniper berry. Um, uh, the bergamot steps out quite a bit. It's a... Uh, it, I wouldn't say it's a fruity scent, but you definitely get the berries, you, the berry notes in there. Uh, and then right after you get the berry notes, you definitely get some of the base notes, which is, I don't get a lot of the patchouli in there, but I definitely get some of the cedar, probably the most of the cedar. Uh, the patchouli, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I don't really care for patchouli. But I have said before that a little bit of patchouli goes a long ways and it can actually be really nice in, a, in an oil. Uh, and this is definitely a very good example of that one. The patchouli is just light enough to where you almost get a hint of it, but it's not overpowering at all. Uh, for the base notes on this one, I definitely pick up a lot more cedar and uh, a little bit of the clove. And then just a hint, uh, I know I mentioned there's a, a, I think it was an alpine or a fir needle in this one. I definitely get some type of, definitely get some type of a, uh, a fir, pine, something like that. It, I mean, it's, it's actually a really nice oil. I burned this one in the house. Uh, I, I used this one. I used this one in the uh, coconut soy and it actually threw extremely well, filled the entire downstairs of the house. I just overall a real nice oil. Um, I don't really get much of, probably a little bit of the fresh current. I don't know that I get, um, again, Alpine Air and Water Mint. Um, I'm not exactly sure what those smell like kind of by themselves, but I definitely get the, uh, I, I mean, the juniper berry, the balsam and the bergamot mix extremely well. You definitely get that balsam in there. And again, nothing is real overpowering this with this one. I'd say probably the one that steps out the most, like I said, is probably the pink juniper berry. Uh, you definitely get a, a real strong berry scent with this one. And then it rounds out really nicely with all the other stuff. Definitely, like I said, definitely not a fruity scent. So if you're looking for something that has uh, a little bit more berries in it, but uh, something that is is real smooth, I wouldn't say musky or anything like that, but it's not going to... It's not going to overpower and be bright and fruity and smell too sweet when you walk into a room, which a lot of berry scents can do. Uh, this one is definitely extremely nice. Uh, there's a reason that these oils uh, kind of elevate themselves into a new category as far as like, uh, if you want to call it luxury fragrance oils or a little bit more of a detailed or luxury scent. Uh, these guys definitely go a long way, and this is definitely a scent that would fit into that category. Whereas something like the Fruit Loops or uh, Fruit Slices from Candle Science or something like that, those, tip those type of scents are actually really nice. They do smell extremely good, but some of those fruity ones definitely put you into kind of a different category uh, where it doesn't smell uh, as elegant as something like this does. Uh, so with this one, 
I would probably say, I know I have like the, the rating system on this one and the rating system, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, there haven't been any uh, farmer's markets around here, so I really can't say what it does at a farmer's market. But if I was gonna put this one on the table, it's, I'm probably gonna put this one in a little bit nicer container. And it's a real nice scent. It's gonna pick up extremely well. It's not overly fruity, so you get uh, some of the people, like I've made the, the sweet cherry ones, and uh, uh, like a raspberry vanilla is almost too bright, too fruity. I see a lot of people kind of shy away from that one just because it can get overpowering in a room, whereas this one definitely does not. So if I was gonna put this one on the rating scale that I do, which is normally, if you haven't seen my videos, uh, if you're gonna take 12 of these to a market, I usually, like a vanilla or something like that. If you take 12 vanilla candles to a market, you're gonna sell all 12 of those. Vanilla is an easy seller. It smells really good. So that's kind of my rating system with this one. Uh, so if I was gonna take 12 of these to a market, I would probably say you're gonna get at least seven or eight of these. Uh, seven, or, seven or eight out of 12 uh, at a market. It's an extremely nice fragrance. Uh, but again, it, it dips into the, the fruity category just a little bit to where you might not get a few people uh, going for that one. But definitely a strong contender if you're looking to add a new fragrance oil into your line. Uh, the next one I've got right here is a maple chai sweet cream. Uh, sweet maple, grated ginger, brown sugar, and buttermilk linger from memories of warm, creamy pastries and decadent sweets. Uh, so the mood on this one is warm and creamy. The top notes are grated ginger, nutmeg, orange zest, the middle is maple syrup and cinnamon leaf, and the base is vanilla bean, brown sugar, buttermilk. Uh, contains uh, essential oils of ginger from China, uh, Devana, uh, acacia bark, uh, nutmeg, orange peel, and ginger extract. I, this one actually turned out to be one of my favorite ones probably out of these three. I burned this one downstairs. Uh, it's extremely nice. It's uh, it's extremely nice. If you've made anything with, uh, if you've done candle science, uh, strudel and spice, you get that real nice brown sugar scent from that one. This one definitely jumps out uh, probably the most with the, uh, the vanilla bean and the brown sugar really step out with this one. And then of course, maple syrup with the nutmeg on this one. It's a, a really nice, really nice overall scent. I've tried a couple chai scents. Uh, I, I haven't been a huge fan of them. Uh, this one definitely, I. I w probably wouldn't even call this one a chai, even though you do get a little bit of a chai in this one. Uh, maple chai sweet cream. And then on this one, I don't know that I get much of the orange zest. Uh, when you burn this one a little bit, uh, it, it tends to bring out a little bit more sweeter when you burn it. So this is absolutely perfect all through winter, fall, anything like that. Uh, this would be an easy seller, fit right into any fall scent that you've got right now. And I definitely get more of a, I don't know, more of like a, like baking cookies uh, when you're going in there. Not as sweet as baking cookies. It definitely doesn't have the sweet of like the strudel and spice. But the base on this one is actually extremely nice. Like I said, the vanilla bean and brown sugar probably come out the most. Uh, maple syrup and uh, a little bit of cinnamon. You definitely get some of that spice in this one, which is really nice. And like I said, this is probably one of my favorites out of the three that I'm reviewing right now. Uh, this is absolutely gonna be in my line going forward. Uh, it's definitely a winter fall scent. You'll probably sell some in the spring and summer just because you always have people that like those types of scents, but this is definitely a more warm, uh, kind of cozy scent. And of course, this one is gonna be an easy seller. Like I said before, if you're gonna take 12 of these to a market, you're gonna sell 10 or 12 of these, especially if you're in, uh, in the season that this kind of fits in, which is winter and fall. A very easy seller, very strong, good kind of winter. I, I wouldn't say food type, but it definitely fits into the food type. Like I said, baking, cookies, the strudel and spice, anything like that, the pumpkin spice, it will definitely fit into that category. And like I said before with the last one, uh, this one, and I I'll say it for this one too, it definitely steps into a little bit more of an elegant scent. Uh, it's not uh, real harsh in uh, kind of one note like some of the fragrance oils that I've reviewed before, whereas uh, this one, you can definitely get a lot of the different stuff in this one. The blending on this one is really nice. Uh, everything really comes through. But like I said, the orange, ze the orange zest and the grated ginger, um, you definitely get a little bit of the ginger in that one. Prob that's probably what's gonna add to it, probably like that baking or cookie type scent, like I was saying with the strudel and spice, but also a very good oil if you're looking to add something into your line as, as far as like winter and fall scents come in. Uh, so the last one I've got right here is the Flowering Cove and Sandalwood. Uh, unmistakably spicy, beautifully bright, clove, sandalwood, cinnamon bark, tobacco, and raw sugar round out this beautifully complex fragrance, reminiscent of a crisp winter's eve. So the mood on this one is spicy and festive. The top notes are cinnamon bark, clove bud, and lily. The middle is tobacco leaf, cassia, black dahlia. 
And the base is patchouli, sandalwood, and raw sugar. And then of course it goes into essential oils, uh, patchouli, uh, orange, cassia, and uh, cinnamon bark. Now this is definitely one that I was curious to try out just because I always like having some type of a sandalwood, driftwood, Caribbean teakwood, or anything like that. I like having some of those musky earthy scents. Uh, they're uh, usually a good scent for almost all year round. And then of course with this one, I mean, you definitely get the sandalwood on this one. I think you get a pretty good mix of the patchouli on this one. Like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of patchouli. It was definitely lighter in the balsam. Uh, you get a real hint of that one. This, this one definitely steps up a little bit more. You get a lot more of the patchouli, but it's still within the range of smelling nice and not overpowering and disgusting <laughs> that like patchouli can really get. Uh, the patchouli, the sandalwood definitely stand out. Um, I don't know that I get a ton of the raw sugar there is a little bit of a sweetness to it, but you could definitely put that probably towards the cinnamon bark, uh, the cassia. But overall, and actually a really nice scent, uh, you definitely get the clove bud on top. Uh, if you're a fan of clove, uh, it definitely stands out, especially when you burn this one. And then of course, going from the oil to the candle, uh, when you burn this one in the wax, it actually smells a lot nicer. Not that this doesn't smell good. This smells incredible, even out of the bottle, uh, but it really evens itself out, kind of softens some things. And it's a, it's a real, I, I don't want to say bright, even though it says it in the description, a bright scent. It's one that you notice in the house. It's not overpowering. Uh, like a, it's not overpowering and it's not a dry type of scent. So when, like when you walk into a room with certain like mahogany, cedars, anything like that, uh, you, I, if they're too strong, I know for me, my nose can like kind of seize up because it's so strong and dry. This one definitely does not do that. Uh, I, it, it's not overpowering and dry. Now, some people may disagree. It depends on your sensitivities to, uh, to oils and scents and anything like that. Uh, but the patchouli, the sandalwood, you definitely get those. It's a little bit sweeter on top, which is really nice. But again, you can walk into a room, you can burn this, and it's not going to overpower you to where you blow it out after a couple hours. So again, with this one, I haven't sold this one at a farmer's market. I do sell it on the website. It does extremely well. Uh, with this one, if you're going to take 12 of these to a market, I'm probably going to say six or seven with this one, just because for me, the, the woodsy scents, the masculine scents, the earth tones, everything like that, they, they do extremely well. Uh, you're probably going to get six to seven out of 12 of these to, to sell. But the good thing about this one is you can sell this one year round. So where some of like the food type and winter type scents, you're only going to be selling those and doing extremely well with those through three, four, yeah, three or four months in the fall and winter, where something like this, it's going to be a good seller, a good even six, seven out of 12 uh, all year round. So all in all, I really like these oils. They're extremely nice, like I said before, and I hate to say it on all of them, but it's true. They just, they, they have more of an elegant and deep, rich uh, scent and a throw when they come to them. It's not like just a real basic one or two note scent that uh, I, I've reviewed in the past where it's, uh, a particular scent, uh, when they say that's what it smells like, that's exactly what it smells like. There's there's no real bouncing back and forth between the four or five maybe different oils and top notes that are, or top, middle, and base notes that are in there. Uh, some of them, like one fragrance will really stand out. Whereas these, you really get an even mix of every single thing that's in there. Uh, now, obviously the top notes, base notes, some of them can be a little bit more muted, but the overall mix on these is extremely nice. And like I said earlier in the video, they definitely lend themselves more to a kind of a luxury line, which is probably something you want to do with wooden wick oils anyways, just because they're typically a little bit more expensive than kind of your uh, your base oils that, that are out there. And that's definitely not a bad thing. Having a, an oil, if you get an oil that's a little bit more expensive, uh, you want it to smell a little bit more expensive because you want to basically, you want to feel comfortable putting a higher price on certain candles and these oils will definitely do that. So you can definitely justify the price a little bit more if you price your candles accordingly with these oils. And like I said, the maple chai is probably my favorite one out of this one. Uh, the balsam and cloudberry is real close behind that one. And the, uh, the clove and sandalwood is actually extremely nice too. I typically don't go for the earthy, like the heavy, uh, the scents like that, but this one is actually extremely nice and definitely one that I would burn in my house on a regular basis. So if you're looking for some new oils, I would definitely recommend some of these definitely coming up into winter and fall. I would say the, the maple chai sweet cream, you definitely need to try this one. Uh, very good oil. It's going to be an extremely good seller and you definitely won't be disappointed with that one. Uh, I've included links to all these oils in the video description down below. So if you want to jump over to Wooden Wicks website, check them out. Uh, if you do end up getting any of these oils, please come back to the video. Let me 
know what you thought of them. And if you end up selling some of them, let me know kind of how accurate the, uh, the rating system or the point system was with those. Uh, like I said, that's going to be different for every single person out there. Definitely depending on your area, your farmer's markets. Uh, some of the ones that I say you might get six or seven, uh, you may sell 10 or 12 of those at the farmer's market and the area that you're in. So definitely try these. Let me know how they worked out for you. And of course, with the links down below, you can also find any of the social media platforms that I follow. I've included links to Instagram, Facebook, my website, my email address if you want to reach out. I've got links down there for the eBooks that I have, which are step-by-step -step, uh, guides, uh, printed PDFs, uh, whichever you want. They show you exactly how to make candles using a bunch of different wax like soy 6006, coconut soy, and cocoa apricot from Wooden Wick as well. And of course, I've got links to everything down there as well as online coaching and some of the new uh, online workshops that we have coming up. So definitely take a look, uh, click over the links, see what we've got coming up. And of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.